In this video, I want to show you a visualization of what we worked with in the last uh, lesson. Basically, uh, I want to go with you step by step through the code and with the memory that each process has and show you exactly what's going on behind the scenes, right? So that I can make sure that you actually understand what's going on here, because it is quite tricky for me to show you this without any sort of uh, visual element to it, all right? So to start off, uh, first, we're just gonna sort of execute the code in head, in our heads and not go with the breakpoint because it's kind of difficult to actually debug uh, programs that uh, create multiple processes. So here we get to the first line that says, okay, ID equals fork. Fork, what does it do? Well, that fork, as I told you before, it actually creates a child process from the main process. And that child process is actually very important because that child process uh, has the same exact memory as the main or the parent process. Okay, so everything is copied over. So to sort of visualize this, I'm gonna actually open this to the right, something like this, and I'm gonna show the memory up top. So as you can see, uh, both argc and argv get the exact same values, but the sort of the memory place where they are allocated it's different, right? So if you change the argc in one of the process, you're not gonna change it in the other. It's not gonna see the difference. Uh, it's not gonna see the change the other process, right? So each, basically each process has a copy of uh, its own variables, right? And when you fork it, you're gonna get the same values. Okay, so now we, we have forked this. Now we have n, we have just a definition of n. So I'm gonna go in parallel as if the code is for the both processes is executed like uh, in completely in parallel, right? When uh, the tenth line of code is executed in the parent process, then the tenth line, the tenth line of the code is executed in the child process, and we're just gonna go like this. But do keep in mind that this is not really how it works. Sometimes it's not gonna be like this. But just for visualization's sake, we're gonna take a look at it like this. Um, Okay, so we do get our own copies of our copy of n. So every process does get that. Then we get to our if statement. So we're gonna ask here: Is id equal to zero? Well, in the in the parent process, the id was set to something like let's say something like four thousand three hundred. Right. So we get four thousand three hundred in the id. That is that four thousand three hundred represents the process id of the child. Uh, process. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, in the child process, the ID, since the child process also has a copy of that ID uh, variable, the ID is actually set to zero because it is a child process. Okay, so when we encounter this if, we say, okay, if ID is zero, well, in the main process, it in the parent process, it is not zero. So we get to the else branch. And when we get there with the child process, if we ask if id is zero, we actually do get into the true branch of that if statement. So we get, so in the child process, we get n equal to one, and in the parent process, we get n equal to six. Okay, I hope that's straightforward. Next up, we have uh, another check, another check for the id to figure out if we are on the main or on the parent process or we are on the child process again so if id is not zero for the for the parent process the id is not zero it's 4300 right so we do get into that if but for the child process we actually skip over that because it is zero so you should skip over that okay and the the parent process is going to call wait wait what does it say well wait says stop the execution, completely stop the execution until a child process has finished its execution. Since we only have one child process, which is the one on the right there, uh, it means that it's just gonna wait there till we get to the return zero of the other process. Okay, so then it's straightforward. The, uh, the child process starts executing, so starts executing int i, i equals, well, n. n, in our case, is going to be equal to 1, like right here. It, this is going to be 1, so we're going to get i less than n plus 5, which is 6. So we're going to just print every single uh, number from 1 up to 5. 
not including six. And then, of course, again, it's going to be checking if ID is not zero. Well, since we're in the child process, our ID is actually zero, so it's not going to execute this line and it's just going to return zero. OK, so there we are. Now that the child process has finished execution, the parent process can continue. So the wait, the wait function says, all right, well, I, I'm, uh, your, your, your child process has finished execution, so you can continue execution on your own. OK, let's go. And it's going to start its own for loop. So I'm going to say int i, then for i equals n, again, i is going to be 6, and then it's going to go up to, well, 10. So it's going to print all the numbers from 6 to up to 10 in that for loop. And then it's going to check, is our ID that we got from, from fork, is it different than zero? Well, of course it is, it's 4,300. So print also a line break and then return zero as well. And with that, we actually executed both of the processes and the parent process actually waited for the child process in this case. So as you can see, two very important conclusions to, to get from this is one, that the memory is getting copied copied value by value, variable by variable from one process to another when you do fork, right? They are going to be exactly the same in both processes once you do fork. But when you go ahead and execute it, like each, each of the process has their own actual space in memory. So when one modifies a variable, the other one does not necessarily have to have the same value. Okay. And secondly, here is that both processes in this situation actually execute the same exact code, right? So once fork is called, right, the execution line gets split and you start executing the same lines of code, but with different results because, because of that ID, right? This ID is very, very important. Uh, in this case, it lets us know whether it were the parent process or the child process. And depending on which uh, process we are, we do different things. But we also do some common things, right? We, uh, for example, we both the processes declare this n, declare this i. Both the processes have a for loop that's going to execute, and both the processes actually print on the screen. So I hope this helped you uh, understand better the multi-process nature of uh, these functions and what they actually do behind the scenes. Going further with this uh, playlist, of course, we're going to take a look at more advanced concept, concepts with uh, multi-process programming, but uh, I just wanted to make sure you fully understood what's, what happens when you uh, fork a process, what, ha what happens when you instantiate a new child process behind the scenes. Because if you do that, if you just understand fork uh, from this whole playlist that uh, is going to be uploaded, uh, then I think you basically understood like 30% of uh, this multi-process programming that we are doing here. All right, if you do have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, or uh, you notice something that I missed, please uh, leave them in the comments or on our Discord server. It really helps a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you got something out of this video. Take care. Bye.